Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about the 10 islands no one wants to buy at any price. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Owning an island seems like a dream come true, but they cost a lot of money and apparently only rich celebrities and billionaires like Johnny Depp, Leonardo DiCaprio and Mel Gibson can afford them. You might think that surely if there was an island, you could afford you would buy it, just to say you could. But what if we were to tell you that there are some islands on the market, that, no matter the cost, nobody is willing to buy? Why, you ask? Let's find out. It turns out that you could also get an island for a more than reasonable price. However some of these deals have special requirements, which is why people are not rushing to buy them. There's a bonus for budget travelers at the end, an island for free. Number 10. Raoul Island. Raoul Island, Sunday Island, the largest and northernmost of the main Kamadic Islands, 900 kilometers, 560 miles, south-southwest of Arta Island of Tonga and 1,100 kilometers, 680 miles, north-northeast of New Zealand's North Island, has been the source of vigorous volcanic activity during the past several thousand years, that was dominated by Dacetich explosive eruptions. The area of the anvil-shaped island, including fringing islets and rocks mainly in the northeast, but also a few smaller ones in the southeast, is 29.38 square kilometers, 11 square miles. The highest elevation is Momokai Peak, at an elevation of 516 meters, 1,693 feet. Although Raoul is the only island in the Kamadic group large enough to support settlement, it lacks a safe harbor, and landings from small boats can be made only in calm weather. The island consists of two mountainous areas, one with summits of 516 meters, 1,693 feet, and 498 meters, 1,634 feet, and the other with a summit of 465 meters, 1,526 feet, the two separated by a depression which is the caldera of the Raoul volcano. The Denham caldera was named for the nearby Denham Bay, itself named by Royal Navy Captain Henry Mangles Denham in HMS Herald, who came to complete a chart survey of the island on 2 July 1854. His son Fleetwood James Denham, 16 years, died from a tropical fever, and was buried near the beach at the head of Denham Bay, where a number of the grass-grown graves of former settlers were. The brass plaque heading this grave has been preserved. The island costs only $500. Number 9. Isola della Gaiola. Gaiola Island is one of the minor islands of Naples, off the city's Pasilipo residential quarter, in the metropolitan city of Naples and Campania region, southwestern Italy. It is located white in the Parco Sommerso di Gaiola. It is located offshore in the Gulf of Naples, and a part of the volcanic Campanian archipelago of the Tyrrhenian Sea. The island is at the center of the Parco Sommerso di Gaiola, or Underwater Park of Gaiola, a protected marine reserve. Naples's legend has considered Gaiola a cursed island, which with its beauty hides a restless fate, the Gaiola malediction. The reputation developed from the frequent misfortunes and premature deaths in the families of its 20th century owners. For example, in the 1920s, it belonged to the Swiss Hans Braun, who was found dead and wrapped in a rug. A little later, his wife drowned in the sea. The next owner was the German Otto Grunbach, who died of a heart attack while staying in the island's villa. A following owner, the pharmaceutical industrialist Morris Eve Sandoz, committed suicide in a mental hospital in Switzerland. Its subsequent owner, a German steel industrialist, Baron Karl Paul Langheim, was dragged to economic ruin by wild living. The island has also since belonged to Gianni Agnelli, the Turinese owner of Fiat Automobiles, who suffered the deaths of many relatives, and to J. Paul Getty, who experienced from a father's suicide of his oldest son, death of his youngest son, and kidnapping of a grandson, before his own death. The last private owner of the island was Jan Pasquale Grappone, who was jailed. Newspapers talked again about the Gaiola malediction in 2009, after the murder of Franco Ambrosio and his wife Giovanna Sacco, who owned a villa opposite the island. The island costs only $500. Number 8. Pitcairn Island. The Pitcairn Islands consist of four islands, Pitcairn Island, a volcanic high island, Henderson Island, an uplifted coral island, and two coral atolls, Eno Island and Ducey Island. The only inhabited island, Pitcairn, has an area of 5 square kilometers, 1.9 square miles, and a population density of 10 per square kilometers, 26 per square miles, it is only accessible by boat through Bounty Bay. 
The other islands are at a distance of more than 100 kilometers, 62 miles. Worldwide map services show very little detail of the islands, and are even of limited use to show the location of them with respect to each other, and to other islands, because they are so small and far apart. Oceania, islands in the South Pacific Ocean, about one half of the way from Peru to New Zealand, one of the most remote sites of human habitation on Earth. The inhabited island, Pitcairn, is at 25.04 south, 130.06 west. Pitcairn is about 2,170 kilometers, 1,350 miles, southeast of Tahiti, 5,310 kilometers, 3,300 miles, from Auckland, New Zealand, and over 6,600 kilometers, 4,100 miles, from Panama. Number 7. Piacabuchu Islands, Brazil. You can become the owner of not one, but six islands, with picturesque views and unique wildlife, located on San Francisco River in northeastern Brazil, for just $79,500. The reason why nobody has grabbed them up yet is probably, that they are technically not buying these islands as much, as they are buying the right to use them for 99 years, and they will be subject to some vague, small, yearly taxes. Number 6. Little Rocky Island, Canada. This 8-acre island with white sandy beaches, well-preserved nature, and pine forests is also sheltered from storms and hurricanes by the neighboring islands. There's no other property there, so you could be the first to build your own dream house. Its price is only $74,500, as for why it's still for sale, maybe it's because the Canadian market is flooded with private islands. Number 5. Tillamook Island, USA. Tillamook Island, also known as Terrible Tilly, is not an island in the traditional sense, it's a rock with a lighthouse off the coast of Oregon. The original cost of Tillamook Island, which was sold several times, was $500,000, and now it's dropped to $50,000, but the waves sweeping over the entire island and a history full of various legends, myths, and even tragedies, starting with an accident at the end of the 19th century with the head of a surveyor expedition, Mason John Trawavis, who was hit by a wave and swept out to sea, scares off potential buyers. Number 4. Chandler Island, USA. Candler Island is a one-acre island with a view of picturesque Maine, you can buy for $39,999, their back quote a small cabin on the island and you also can build your own house there. The only problem is that high tide is significant for the island, the water covers half of this already small piece of land. Number 3. McGibbon Island, Canada. A small undeveloped island on St. John's River, in New Brunswick, Canada is up for sale for less than $29,900. The only disadvantage is that every spring, floodwaters cover the entire island, so you can back quote t really build anything there. During the other seasons the island is a great place for camping or kayaking. Number 2. Sheep Lake Islands, Canada. These small tree-covered islands surrounded by the crystal, clear waters of Sheep Lake will certainly give you peace and joy, but probably not much of a privacy, they are only 25 miles from the closest fishing village, so there might be a lot of visitors and the island might not be that private anymore. But if you're okay with that, you can buy this island for $50,989. Number 1. Fort Carroll, USA. For just $31,500 you can become the owner of this historic artificial private island, built in 1848 to protect the city of Baltimore, on one condition, you have to restore the abandoned fort on it. Local businesses tried to renovate the island and turn it into a hotel, conference center, casino, and even a jail, but these attempts were unsuccessful. It's an important conservation nesting site for seagulls and herons, so you can't start major construction work, since it can scare off the birds. Bonus, Marchica Island, Australia. Marchica Island is an island located close to the south coast of Tasmania, Australia. The 186 hectare, 0.72 square miles, island is part of the Marchica Islands Group, and comprises part of the Southwest National Park and the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Site. The Marchica Island Lighthouse, the southernmost Australian lighthouse, is located on the southern tip of the island. The island is part of the Marchica Island Group Important Bird Area, identified as such by BirdLife International because of its importance as a breeding site for seabirds. Marchica Island is currently inhabited by volunteers, swapped out every six months, the improvements on it are being maintained by the Tasmanian government, and volunteer organizations interested in preserving the history of the island and the lighthouse.
There's an opportunity to live completely rent-free for six months on this tiny island with Australia's most southerly lighthouse off the coast of Tasmania, to take part in the Marchica Island Caretaker Program as a volunteer. Duties include weather readings, ocean observations, cleaning out stormwater drains, lawn mowing, brush cutting, etc. Volunteers can take up to 716 pounds, 325 kilograms, of food and clothing, and there is just one resupply trip during the six-month stay. Would you personally buy a getaway island for yourself? What do you think of our video? Do let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.